out of British. Martin Nietzsche speaking. Good to see you, peeps. Good to see you back. Another exciting flat earth British flat day night. Okay, and it's going to be very epic. Okay, guys, we're going to really have a good time. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. <laughs> we won't be talking too much about that in this vlog guys okay i am sick to the back teeth of hearing about it and it's boring as shit plague is boring as shit okay it's not my team so i'll be doing that but we will be digging deeper guys and clues to the whole thing okay we'll be digging deep indeed into this reset okay guys now it's been a really exciting few days on Flat Earth British, guys. I put out there a few days ago, post on a Flat Earth British Matt League channel as well, community page for people, okay, to step forward and say, no, they're not going to have it. We're going to be getting out of like, this bullshit, phony civilization, setting up on our own, as in a breakaway civilization, or zations everywhere in all countries. Okay, so this is the plan. <laughs> Set your intent. Don't doubt, because it will fuck off and not happen then. If you don't doubt, it's easy, it's simple, it will happen. That's how it works. That's how reality works, that's how they know. The controllers, that's why they create a big nasty dark cloud thought form on you. Uh, to try and drop your body vibration, because they're energy vampires and they love that shit. I won't give them an inch, me. I won't fucking give them an inch, yeah? Try to break everyone. Fuck that. So, there's been offers coming in, guys. Left, right, and center for land, for uh, resources, for help. Okay, tradesmen and women, or people just happy to come and help. Okay, families, good lord. It is a beautiful dream that is going to be a reality. Okay, guys. Now, I've enlisted help. Okay, so people can just manage this volume that of emails that are arriving I can't deal with and hundreds and hundreds of comments and people saying yeah yeah I'm in I'm in I'm in I'm in but I can't remember everyone's names etc so you got to keep posted okay obviously we're locked on we can't move to do shit just yet so we're gonna put plans in motion okay guys in the interim period as soon as we and then bam 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 get moving okay you could do some stuff now I'll give you suggestions but I'm gonna do it halfway through this vlog okay guys and tell you where we're at and it's very exciting mm. so that's what we're doing on Flight of British <laughs> okay guys so we're going to look into the origins of the Phoenicians actually guys okay the controllers who are the Phoenicians how do we know because they've got maritime law um, the Vatican got like funny fish heads okay <laughs> <laughs> the buildings have got seashells and all the Phoenicians come out of the water, moon men, moon women, and we know all their deities, we know how it all works from Flat Earth British Think Tank. Now, did they just arrive or manifest out of the ether, or were there origins to the Phoenicians? So I looked a bit further back and there's a narrative for the sea peoples who are very very mysterious and leave carnage behind them and there's clues in it as well as to how this shit went down okay it's a little bit deeper thinking okay um but we can see we can see. if you can read between the lines you can see okay so that's what we're gonna do we're gonna do the sea peoples okay and we're going to look into ghosts. Okay, it's going to be spooky. Okay, why? Because I'm a spooky guy. <laughs> it'll be epic. It'll be fun. Okay, so make sure that I like, grab something because it's going to be really scary. Okay, I was going to do this right mental asylum in Michigan. Right, it was a mad mud for that I'll leave that for another night. It's got better spookiness now. Okay. So, concerning the spookiness, we'll be concerning tell live vision what his true aim was you know I think they're all watching that and other technologies the you can see stuff that is there outside of the visible light spectrum okay um, and we're going to be looking into um, Pulvergia Island in near Venice which is Hell Island and I think it's where the Phoenicians who are the Venetians who are the Venetians 
got rid of all the dead because the island's like 50% built on bones and it's just like oogles of dead and skeletons and the place is too haunted and they won't knock it down no one can go there because it's that spooky you scared it's gonna be spooky <laughs> we'll have some fun um, along the way okay so make sure to subscribe to um, Flat Earth British Think Tank Okay, and I was live on there last night for three hours talking about everything I think about all of this bullshit that's going on and everything else. Okay, guys? Yeah? All of the different ideas. May touch upon a few of them in this post. Okay. And uh, the Celtic Italian channel. Okay, now I haven't put any content much on there because I'm too busy with, you know, this channel, which I feel at home in. I'm <laughs> quite happy with. But you know there's still a lot of content we're over a thousand videos which is millions of views and all of that's so just well worth checking it out okay so make sure to subscribe to that as well i'll leave it in the description box the celtic tataria channel is our channel too and Matt and Nika, this one okay so let's get into way we're going to talk about all of the exciting things okay along the way i'm going to compose myself hope you're all all right But am I bothered? What am I? Look at my face. Hmm? What am I bothered? Anyway, we know this shit's going down and we know bad it can fucking get, alright? We've all seen Mad Max. Okay? <laughs> but don't, don't, don't worry. Because Bob told us. Okay? <coughs> no. Buckle in. I'm going to look into sea peoples and their strange deities and try and nail where the Phoenicians come from they are clues okay they are clues so I'm going to start you guys okay I'm not going to do a massive amount of reading not reading a reading really mood plus my you know it's, it's, I'm getting time 10 fascinating theories regarding the ancient sea people so they seem to arrive you know in what they would call the bronze age no it's not time scales I've got we've bring all that forward okay and there are clues, okay? Now, there's very little written about them, apparently, but there's um, stacks of cartouches and, and bas reliefs, sculptures, all over all cultures concerning sea peoples, okay? So that's the Hindus, the Hittites, the Egyptians, and even the Vikings, all of them. Anyway, let's try and nail who the sea peoples are, guys, and the Phoenicians, if they are one in the same, which I'm not thinking they are. A confederation of pirates, known collectively as Sea Peoples, terrorised the coastal cities and civilizations of the eastern Mediterranean, where the Phoenicians are. For the most part, these pirates, who were the Bronze Age precursors to the Vikings of Scandinavia, preyed upon Egypt, which at the time was in the New Kingdom period, which I also don't go with. What followed was a series of destructive raids that culminated in two major battles, the Battle of Dajay and the Battle of Delta. The former, a land battle, was won by the army of Ramesses III. The latter, a naval battle, not only repulsed one of the last major invasions of the Sea Peoples, but very well saved ancient Egyptian civilization. But despite their important role in history, and the widely held notion that they were responsible for the late Bronze Age collapse, a near catastrophic decline in civilization throughout the Aegean and Eastern Mediterranean, the Sea Peoples remained subject to controversy. So, end of an era, a reset, and we know these depictions, guys. We see them rising from the sea, etc. These Sea Peoples, although there are many areas of consensus some historians and archaeologists continue to discover new interpretations so it's open to interpretations so that's where we come in so is it the philistines that um who are you philistine they wrote about in the bible i'm not thinking but there is a connection like phil or you know with ph or even phi which is very interesting phi listines phi list hmm. in 
interesting. Well, anyway, 10. So the Philistines, so they're number 10 on the Hipparade, okay? For being the anomalous sea peoples, depicted as arch villains of ancient is of the ancient Israelites in the Old Testament, the Philistines settled on the south coast of Israel, which today includes Gaza Strip. After establishing settlements, the Philistines formed a confederation of city states which included Gaza, Ashkelon, Ashkodod, Gath, and Akron. The Philistines, Philistines came into conflict with the Israelites once they started to expand their power beyond their coastal domains. Because of the conflict, the Israelites uh, were not demonized by the Philistines, but they actual demons out of their gods, which includes the fish god Dog Dagon. Now, let's have a look at Dagon. Who's he all about then? Here he is. And it's crazy, D uh, Dagon. It's, we've seen um, this before, but he's got the fish hat on. And he's a Babylonian. So, instantly, straight back to the Phoenician gods in the Babylonians. So, Dagon, or Dagon, is as spelled um, in some historical writings, is originally a Babylonian fertility god, just like Bacchus, who evolved into the, a major northwest Semitic god, reportedly of fish um, and or of fishing, uh, the symbol of, of multiplying. And he was worshipped by the Amorites, founders of the Babylon city. Okay, okay. What did Dagon represent? Who was he worshipped? Right. Dagon. Okay, the Semitic god of crop fertility. Worshipped extensively throughout the Middle East. At Ramsamara, Dagon was apparently second in importance to El, the supreme god. Although his functions as a god, as... Um, oh, vegetation seemed to be transferred to Baal. Okay. So we're getting it. Okay, Dogon is represented by both grain and fish, symbolized for fertility and multiplying, often depicted with the torso of a man and a fish, a tail of a fish. He may very well be a mer, the first merman, predating even the merfolk or mermen and women of Greek mythology. So there's your dog, Dagon. Let's have a look at some pictures of him. Oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear. So there's the Pope. The Pope's got the old Dagon hat going on. Dagon. Dagon. Excuse me. Look at that. Same old fish head. Fish hat. And fishy tributations. You know, he's grown a pair of legs since then. But they change when they come out of the water. Uh, he's got one of those strange handbags. I think it's a magnet. I think it's a lead weight. Maybe it's like um healing technology and he's got his wristwatch on wow so okay we know him we know this we know this same wristwatch same man bag it's like the mesopotamian gods see so many other deities that we see and they come out of water so is it even possible well even in the official narrative with evolutionary insanity etc they say that we you know we come out of the sea you know, we crawled up the beach as a eyeless lungfish. <coughs> Sprouted legs, okay. Um, grew into a mammal, or not, as the case may be. A reptilian. <laughs> um, basically, um, eyes, everything else. Um, arms, legs. And then become a space monkey. And evolved from that into this, apparently. So they say we come from the sea anyway. But, just like... Children of the sea, and they got this advanced technology frying machine. So they're from elsewhere, aren't they? So are they from outside this enclosure, this room? So the pups, the uh, pups mitre, it's just like a fish on that side with the eye as well. So now freaky, and Starbucks as well. They got a melusillin. Hyperborea era. So that's a suggestion which comes up later on is they came from the north and we're not talking about Scandinavia, we're talking about further north. Hyperborea. Look at that mud flooded environment. They brought on a mud flood. Okay.
Sorry, we're miles away then. <laughs> very, very interesting. Oh. All cultures talk about these fishy folk. And sea serpents. Okay. Anyway. Oh, excuse me. Anyway. So, the Philistines. No, I'm not really going with the Philistines. I don't know why. But there's... um. Apart from um, outside of the Bible, the Phoenicians were mentioned in several Syrian, Phoenician and Egyptian letters. Whilst in general, he considered that the Philistines were a group of sea peoples who settled in the area. Not everyone agrees with their origin. So it seems that they just turned up. It's a bit like the, uh, you know, the Hebrews as well. So there's a Sardinian connection. Okay. Of course, so they got annals of these fishy head people turning up out of the water okay and also in Sicily okay apparently this place was influenced by people who arrived from the sea okay and the Etruscans who were always mysterious apparently they proceed Rome um, and they had the fascists, the electromagnetic tech and all of the same you know fashion <laughs> and style. Few European civilizations remain as mysterious as the Etruscans. They inhabited the north and central parts of Italy, left behind still mostly undecipherable alphabet and language by forcing historians to rely on further information from Roman records, as well as colorful tombs Etruscans, Etruscans built for one another. The Etruscans' origin is far from new because the ancient Egypts pondered the issue themselves. They're that ancient. Okay, it's connected with Herodotus, Herodotus, which is also somebody well worth looking into, but it is sketchy the information. Interestingly enough, one of the seas peoples were the Terish. That's like the Tanish of Anatol which I prepostrated was the fucking Tartars. Hang on a minute. Most of the repeated assertion comes from Rodotus, however. Rodotus, later Virgil, believed to be believed that the Etruscans came from Anatolia region of Lydia, uh, led by King uh, Turusnus. Interesting that the Sea Peoples were the Teresh, who became ancient historians, also called them uh, Thuranians. According to this theory, the forefathers of the Etruscans were originally Greek pirates. So there's a Balkans connection. They've got a big uh, thing with the sea, um, but most places have. Look at Copenhagen, they've got a mermaid in the harbour. So we don't know too much about Troy, it all comes out of Homer's Iliad. Okay, but it's a reset of a civilization, a great civilization. We've seen the images. But also, the Sea Peoples. It's like, who knew? I never. So the Battle of Troy is in the heart of the Iliad, okay, and also of Homer's Odyssey is another reset book, guys. One of the Western world's oldest work of literature. Now, the epic poem describes the protracted siege of, the, of Troy by several armies representing the many different tribes of Greece. Greece is a colloquial term for anyone in the eastern Mediterranean, okay, guys, and the tribes of Danoi, uh, Turkushkans, and the Ashisans, whatever, uh, may be participated, may have participated in Sea People's invasions. Okay, so that is connected with the the gift. Okay, the horse. So I'm wondering if that's, you know, just an analogy for taking down of a civilization. They come in bearing gifts and then you just infiltrate from the inside, take us down. You know? Like it is now, for example. Because they've broken the world. It was shit to begin with. It's completely fucked now. Excuse my French, but it's Armageddon. So I guess I'm going to get away with it. Um, Minoan connection. There they are there. Look at these guys coming out of the water. They're multi-headed ones again. Do you know why? I think they're shifting between dimensions. You know, see them horror films when they go really, really quick? Yeah, and they're sort of out of sync with this dimension. I think they're doing that. Unless it's just many facets because they're full of shit. So there's the Cretans and the Minoan Empire. 
all are the same okay they had a catastrophic event as well which was the Santorini event okay apparently like this is in the cause of the biblical plagues so it's been uh, prostrated guys so yeah there was a giant volcano which I have found in texts of the Middle Ages is happening in the Middle Ages the Santorini event which takes out a lot of that part of the Mediterranean central Mediterranean the Dorian invasion could it be them they were invaded by sea peoples as well okay and we get down to number two the greater Indo Eastern Europe European East okay and number one is outsized influence of the Greek mythology as I said that's just colloquial term covered by Odyssey as well for instance the story of Zeus the chief of gods of the Olympians um, and the battle with the monster Typhon likely to be Selika um, a, a kingdom in South Anatolia controlled by the Hittites again before the collapse of the Mycenae Greeks and Selika in large numbers from there the Greek absorbed Hittite and Selika legends including the story of the sea dragon defeated by a thunder god Tech okay the Greek story of Tosa one of the heroes of the Trojan War similarly showcased a familiarity with ancient Near East said that Tosa and the men settled Crete and Cyprus um, which is Phoenician enclave and then set out on many voyages took them to Canaan and Phoenician cities such as Sedan they could have come before the Phoenicians according to this narrative these Olympians yeah, these um, like Greek gods types the Phoenicians so there they are the Babylonian god so we've seen him before anyway but it's the Phoenicians and well who are the sea peoples so they paint the narrative for this and I just thought it was really interesting because of the way the fall of civilization has just happened by infiltrators yeah phonies like the people who rule and own all the land who just like imposters they've hijacked a civilization that doesn't belong to them in the first place I've killed trillions before us for some reason one theory suggests the sea peoples were actually the Trojans okay so the narrative for the Trojans has been attributed to the sea peoples as well and they worm their way in using a Trojan horse they'll jump out take over the world blah 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 so it causes um, the age, age end of an age the late bronze age devastated the ancient world okay the mortuary temple of Ramesses the third okay and you've got descript descriptions or inscriptions of excuse me which we'll have a look at along the way okay here so these are some of the evidences of these sea peoples turning up and you know how many images have we looked at guys with um, all of these Phoenicians turning about the water you know and I'm really thinking it is these peoples so there's a famous scene on the north wall of that place I just showed you and they don't seem to be like fishy but maybe they're rulers huh? let's have a look okay oh dear excuse me ah there you are there. okay these seem to be giants I don't know if they're not in perspective but yeah look at this carnage so many of them turn up and then in all cultures this is the evidence of these sea peoples existence okay also here what's this one carving relief of Kadash inscriptions showing us uh, Shosu spies being beaten by Egyptians so they had spies and again in what are you watching? And you are using another bit of evidence, some lines about foreigners from the sea. And in Karnak as well. It talks about these peoples from the sea. And on this cartouche on top of there as well. Um on an, a wall. 
um, also talks about these very mysterious sea peoples. So, are they precursors to the Phoenicians? Are they the Phoenicians? Did they come around before? Turn the Phoenicians because they got the same god, see? Okay, like Dogon, who's Baal, who's Bacchus. Yeah? Okay. We're moving on. <laughs> we are moving on. So the next part is going to be spooky. It's going to be spooky. So get comfy. I'm looking at half past seven UK time. Not to move on. No. I know that's a bit of a horrible thing. There, look at that. The daughter of an island owner had her face ripped off. A part <laughs> during the terrible face ripped apart during a terrifying night in Pavagila. Now I'm not sure if that's the name but this place I sailed past when I was a young man in the Merchant Navy. Okay and the Chief Engineer Roy said to me as we sailed past there, there was like a little star fort there. He said that would have been teeming with people there sat on that grass there. I said why? He said it was a deaf colony. So what do you mean? He said like play colonies like it so many people got sent there and it was like you give me shivers I had like you know like I just the oh, awfulest feeling I was having shivers looking around me thinking there was something there watching me so I think this is the place where the Phoenicians okay got rid of all their dead because this place is just masked it's, the, it's insane stories I can't read too much more of it but I'll show you give you an idea and I'll give you the link it's spooky Inside the secret Italian island where black plague sufferers were taken to die. Now Napoleon went there on a visit, it was so spooky, he's like, oh yeah, every plague victim in the entire of all of our empire has to come here. They died and they were burned within hundreds of thousands of them. So that's an official narrative, so millions then. Okay, now it's not far from um, Venice. I went to a port called Chioggia, which is near to Venice. We sailed past, it was really close. So it's taken me 30 years plus to find this place. I only found it a couple of nights ago. I couldn't believe it when I saw it. I shit, yeah, that's it. I remember the Starfall thing straight away when I seen it. Known as one of the most illegal places one could but really shouldn't visit, Povigilia Island sits off the coast of northern Italy near Venice where most people began planning a trip to that part of the world. Okay, imagine romantic walks with renaissance art come to mind, haunting islands. On the other hand, generally don't rank very high on anyone's lists of must sees. Okay, now, it was the island where plague sufferers were taken to die and right back through the ages as well as in the Romans as well so I mean oogles amounts of people the Italian island of Povigilia was one of history's choke up and tragic events going back thousands of years during the Roman Empire the island was used to house victims of plague in order to protect the rest of the country, forcing inflicted people to live and die in isolation. Then during the medieval era, plague returned and killed off, over, killed off nearly two-thirds of Europe's population. Povigilia once again calls upon to take the dying and the sick. Dead bodies quickly began to overcrowd the island, and thousands were dumped into large common graves. In many cases the bodies were burned, and some overly cautious Italian communities even got into the habit of shipping away any, <laughs> any more that showed up the slightest signs of illness. just like on um, bring out your dead Monty Python when he says I'm not dead just gives him some money smacks him over the head he is now I don't think that was a joke I think they're fucking were telling us many of these people had not actually been infected with the plague at all they were literally dragged to Bavagilia and dumped atop a pile of rotten corpses 
terrifying negative energy that had been left in the wake of all these deaths remains even on the island's very soil. Isn't it funny? Soil is S oil. soil. Anyway, the very soil had turned rotten. In fact, half the island is um, human ash. Pavgalia Island still happens to be the home of a thriving grape vineyard. Ooh, I bet that's a tangy grape. <laughs> Imagine doing the taste test with that. Mm, I taste, I taste plague victims, the Black Death. Nearly, <laughs> Jilly Golden. <coughs> I shouldn't have said that. Nearly the only people who dare visit the island these days are those who go in seasonal harvest of fruit. Grapevines must do well in the ashy soil because it's said that more than 50% of the island soil is composed of human ash. I bet it gives you a nice tang, that wine. <laughs> but that does well. But probably the Vatican drink that. That's probably what they're having in communion. <laughs> It's got it's grown in dead people's ash. Yes, over a thousand years that was <laughs> just how many people have perished in rotted in the nightmarish island. And there's some real horror stories associated with it. Apparently nobody films there. They built apparently in the Victorian era or a bit earlier, a massive Tatarian mental institution and shipped the mental there. A psychiatric hospital was built, resulting in even more tortured souls. So this place is Hell Island. When the mental hospital was opened in the island in 1922, few people were very surprised. The arrival and droves of mentally disturbed patients to the island only served to enrich the legend of it being a place to avoid. The isolation and privacy offered by the island was also disreputable scientists and doctors to have been pleased to do their patients. So, ugh, I know, experiments on humanity. Doctors tortured their patients. Let's have a look. <sighs> Did he have anaesthetic? I wonder. Oh, so they had all Dr. Manglers and they were just like doing shit with all the people. Oh, it's just all a carnage. I bet all the mental institutions were doing all of that anyway. It was part of it, I reckon. Ooh, demented doctors. Oh, do we read any more? So, no mental illness, 1920s. Some say their screams are still here today. It's like that. <laughs> Did you jump? Anyway. Like that. So it seems pretty like shit. So there may be hundreds and hundreds of thousands of tormented souls so still remain trapped in Pavagiria Island from the massive influx of plague victims who were forced into the island and those who were tortured in the mental hospital that was stationed there. A sense of sorrow and suffering continues to permeate the island to this day. Okay, illegal thrill seekers, where I reported a frightening presence. So I'm not even your like um, drone pilots or your parkour or anything will go there because it's like you get your face ripped off by demons. Abandoned mental asylum. I'd go and have a look around. Hey, there's loads of scrap in there. Looks wicked to have a look around. Yeah. Fucking rip that up. So let's have a look. Um, anyway, so nobody can go there because it's manging and it's full of dead people. In fact, hundreds of thousands of dead people and, and it's an official narrative. With more than a hundred thousand plague victims, um, that is in that one era, never mind the ones of the Roman era, which is Middle Ages early. <sighs> Buried in small island, in a small island of Pavigilia. It is no surprise that human bones continue to wash up on its shores. This fact alone is creepy <laughs> to keep potential buyers away. Now, it's, a, it's up for sale, okay, and they're trying to save it, okay? The evil doctor sounds a ghostly bell each night. So that goes bing. Bing. Ten to four. <gasps> oh, that's fucking even spookier. Oh, did they even do that? 
two old old fashioned uh, telephone things there. Ooh, that's spooky. I know. You're getting all creepy. I am. I, I shouldn't be actually doing these spooky fucking vlogs. I'm on my own. You know, fucking creepy now. Anyway, there are such things as ghosts. Okay. Haunting leads to the abandonment of the island. Okay, so basically, it's so haunted, so evil, so many people, and it's all ash of human bones. Skeletons washing up on the beach. Everything looks mud flooded, by the way. Okay. The atmosphere was heavy and morbid. A bit like, I suppose, a picnic in Auschwitz. I dare say that there's not much birdy things happening in bluebells there. Just a bad atmosphere. Um, so yeah, the daughter of the islands are born of the daughter of the island. And face ripped apart during a terrifying night. I've got pictures. Yeah, there. That's not real. Lying. A menacing voice orders visitors to leave and not return. Get out! Like that. Does that spook you? It's good, isn't it? So look at these. And it's associated with plague, bubonic plague. Well, okay. It's illegal to visit the island today. Trespassers will be electrocuted. So maybe it's all just scaremongering. Maybe there's something else going on with the island. The Phoenicians got big interest in this, but there's no, there's no doubt. I'll show you the photographs now of oogles and oogles and oogles dead. So before the plague, it was an island to quarantine all visitors to prevent the spread of disease. So you want to help? You want to pray? You don't end up on there. I sailed right past you. I could have chucked a pebble on that little staff out there. Yeah. And that's when he told me, imagine sitting on there. And it actually was grass wrong by you. And he's like, imagine sitting on there and just waiting to die. It's like, why? It's like, there was hundreds of thousands. This is famous fucking island. He knew all about it. The chief engineer. It's like, what? So that's it. Yeah, I can't believe it. Found it all these fucking years later. It's just meant to be. Some things are just meant to be. And here's the place. With, excuse me, ditches just full of... Uh, Endless play victims deep in mud as well. And look, there's a course of bricks running along there. Footings for something else. So, skeletons all in the wall, maybe, as well. So, yeah, they did get busy. It's gone across bronze presents there because it's the Freemasons. Napoleon went there, said, This place fucking rocks. All the plague victims in the Empire. So, Napoleon filled it up as well during the early 1800s. This thing been going ongoing since apparently the Roman times the Phoenician get rid of their dead on this evil island this is under um, Paris this is a battery bank okay of bones to produce piezoelectric charge for energy we think in antiquity because they have metal cables going through them and they could indeed because of the compression release piezoelectric forces they're turning black at the bottom so batteries running out, there'll be a whitey here. So it's just the light. So that's under Paris Catacombs, 18.5 million. And in the Czech Republic, they got a crazy, crazy church going on with the pyramids. It's all Jesuits again. And then I got a nice chandelier. Remember, these are people, you know, somebody's, you know, relative, and all in skull and crossbones. That's in the Czech Republic. It's back to Paris. They got a beautiful one under the Vatican. Oh yeah, they got all monks with skulls and shit. That's the Czech Republic. Yeah. And if somebody spent the time to put all those bits of human together and all these skulls compressed endless amounts in the back for previous resets, guys. You're wondering now what to do. <laughs> Oh dear, dear, dear. The catacombs of Paris go on forever. And there's your Phoenician taste. That's what I like to do with your pelvic pelvic bone. <laughs> Sense of peace on a Phoenician. Oh, this is this is centralized controlled religion. Yeah, this is what people are supposed to go to pray. Pray on what exactly? Yeah. In the abattoir, in the abbey. So that is outside, it's a vast antiquity, this place. Roman and medieval, it looks like a Phoenician door arch. 
civilization after civilization, all getting rid of doing exactly the same thing, clearing the Etruscans, the Romans, the Phoenicians, what have you, of their undesirables. They don't even have to be ill to be shipped out to the colony. Bye. Wow. It's quite a cool island. There it is. It's got staff art. In fact, the whole thing looks like the staff art. Beautiful weather. We grow grapes. So anyway, no one will buy it. It's too wanted. I think that's a very appetising sales fucking pitch. Actually, <laughs> you know what they're going to do? Dead can't fucking hurt you. Um, holy shit! And there it is. That's a really intriguing shape, Starford, isn't it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, like the four angels. And there's an entrance to some sort of cave thing they got there. And um that looks like a baby and deformed uh jeez. Probably um experiment victims. I didn't really want to think about that. I don't think about any of it really. So highly sinister guys. Where the Phoenician get rid of their dead at probably pronounced wrong Povigilia Island Povigilia Island of Venice so it's up for sale as I said um, they were going to buy it back the Phoenicians who were the Venetians so a treasured island how Venetians are saving uh, Povigilia so they're basically refurbishing the Tatarian mental house I wonder if they get spooked when the ghosts chime the bell so yeah the Phoenicians are going to save it Okay, they give you a little rundown on its history. Okay. Ah. So there's the palace, the Dogue's Palace. Okay. Is and there was a big staff for and this was part of a Dogue's Palace. So I'm not gonna be reading all that, I'll read it out. So let's have a look. So cruise ships into into Venice. Beautiful. Oh, there it is. Let's have a look. It looks fucking wicked. Although it's going to be a metal institution, it's going to be and a plague hospital. He's reminiscing. You know, worries about the Black Death or anything, are you? Picking it up. I worked on a medieval um, village at Cosmeston Lakes near Penarth in Cardiff. And uh, we were basically excavating a medieval village and they all died of the black death and I was finding all sorts of belongings belonging to these people who were infected by the black death and they had no fucking quarantine measures or anything like pesters could even exist and um, these are the boilers then for your hot water yeah wow so more than 4,500 people from Venice and beyond uh, crowdfunded an experiment okay so they're getting it tarted up, they don't want to lose it. Be nice, wouldn't they? Just trotting up there and having a little building. Yeah, I like that. Alright, it's fucked, but guys, it's going to be a character. Just saying. Just saying. But yeah, play doctors. So they come along and they wave um, this thing with the hourglass. You know, the hourglass that's been turned over and run out of sand, so you have to reset. Because it's like they got like chemicals. They wave them outside of villages, everyone drops like a fucking fly. Almost deliberate. Okay, any more picks? Oh, oh, look at that. Bunker. Straight to the side of the cliff. Nature takes everything back. It is now out there. The council don't do any grass or anything anymore. Or everything's growing back. Looks bloody lovely. I love it. Yeah, this place is giving me the EGBGs, though. I'm not sure if I could actually walk around there at night on my own but like, I don't really give a shit about things like that I'm just not scared it's like it's just a state of mind just like fuck them what are you going to do you're like a <laughs> in the year just go <laughs> yeah just fucking ghosts so anyway very interesting we're moving on okay more ghost stuff okay to do with John Loki Beard who's attributed to um Inventing the television. Now, thinking about this phone, 
a second before I start reading this, just give you a little bit of an idea of the picture. It's a phone, as in phonetics, Phoenician, phone, phonograph, okay, phone. So it's a Phoenician tool, okay. Now, it's cell phone and electromagnetics, 5G, etc., 4G, 3G, are affecting the cells. Now they're calling it cellular because it affects you on a cellular level, okay. Cell towers. Look, winky thing. Anyway. So they invented television and different technologies, infrared, to look into the visible light spectrum to communicate with the dead, okay. Televisions used to bring in images of dead people into them, okay. When you get all them fuzz and that, all of that chaos and disturbance, um, images will come out of that. A bit like collecting white noise um, on old fashioned recorders and there being voices withheld in it. Are you settled? It's going to be spooky. Okay, here we go. Science and the supernatural. <laughs> no, you can't do a in Martin. Scottish inventor, inventor and innovator John Alugi Beard, okay, Beard, um, didn't invent the television. He was just a well, Freemason because he was Scottish and basically nicked it. Died in June 1946, 70 years ago. Intriguingly, like some other notable figures of this time, he drew an idea that the dead can be communicate with the living. So, how did these men of science attempt to uncover the truth behind the paranormal? Now, to my mind, guys, right, there's more to this realm than they're telling you. I've seen stuff, experienced stuff. I know people have too. So they're lying, okay? Or they don't admit it, but science can't. But this place is supernatural. And what is happening? It's supernatural by nature. Now, we have a drink. So in Rax, the seventh the 90th anniversary of the demonstration of the television by pioneer John Logie Beard. It's also 70 years since his death. Beard achieved what others thought impossible, transmitting what he called a living image. He also, he was also one of the reputable scientists and inventors of the earliest 20th century who were intrigued with the paranormal. Beard's grandson, Ian, Logie Beard, former curator of television at the National Media Museum in Bradford, says in the 1920s and 30s there was much more blurred line between science and spiritualism than there is today. So the whole science of television and other technologies was invented and brought into fruition for communication with the dead. Scathing mirrors, black mirrors, and, uh, and that's what they were invented for. I'm not sure we should just smash them up and fucking get rid of these iPhones and start with these flip phone shit things we used to have. Nokia 3310s might be worth a lot of money soon. Um, part of this was driven by the mass sense of loss resulted from World War One. A large part of the generation of men was missing and everyone was affected by it missing you know guys in the first world war all you get is endless names of men and none of these bodies are fucking found they say oh yeah they're lost in the no man's land in bits blown to smithereens machine guns didn't collect them eaten by flies rats blah 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 but not millions and millions you know i think they could have got rid of a lot of men by gassing and stuff you know just just wholesale murder of large amounts of people under the rules of war more prominent and reputable men thought their duty to investigate a spiritual phenomena and using expertise tried to decipher so-called supernatural events. Beard's brief foray in the world of the paranormal begins, began shortly after his television achievement. According to his musings, his sermons, soap and television, autobiographical notes of John Logie Beard, he thought that it would be possible to use infrared or ultraviolet rays in place of light in order to send an image in complete darkness. Now, so he tried it, but 
had a few problems. I think of this, I think of 5G. <laughs> well. So we had help from Assistant Wally. Um, he tried the uh, ultraviolet first, um, but it affected the boy's eyes, so he switched to infrared. B had used electric fires to produce the radiation. Riven, riven that they were practically heat rays, I added more fires until Wally was nearly roasted alive. Then I put in a dummy's head, added more fires, and the dummy's head went up in flames. <laughs> After the disaster, Beard decided, sorry Wally, he said, so the Beard decided, Beard decided to try shorter infrared waves. That's a good idea. He did this by using ordinary light bulbs covered in a thin layer of ebonite which cut out the light and it let the infrared rays pass while he managed to sit under the apparatus without much pain okay sorted good job too um beard saw him on the screen although he was in actual darkness so he invented night vision to try and see um but he nearly cooked his assistant in 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 the process <laughs> So anyway, I'm not reading any more of this, but the idea is there is a very spooky story a little bit further on concerning his um, relative or Marjorie, who has a psychic experience with Thomas Edison, or Alva Edison as well. Um, really, really intriguing, also goes into white noise, sound phenomena. So that's why all this stuff was invented, uh, oh, that's my son, guys, okay, for spirituality and connection with the dead. So I'll give you that link. A lot of these famous researchers and the scientists were big into it, including hmm, Charles Darwin, eh? He's killed. Russell Wallace, Michael Faraday. Oh, plenty of people were into it. And it's a very interesting field. I'm going to look at some spooky pictures later on in Pics of the Day. Okay. More antiquity concerning you know cities that have been inundated and are still down there but these are Phoenician cities and they're not where they're supposed to be you know so this one is like forget Atlantis these sunken cities the ancient world every bit as incredible as the legend and what you've got here guys yeah note where it is Florida Biscayne yeah, key Biscayne it's like Biscay in France okay the gates of Neptune yeah, all of this and grow and see. It's just incredible. And uh, Cleopatra's kingdom. Okay, Alpha of Alexandra, which you can see on Google bits of it. And they go down and they find incredible architecture of Cleopatra's lost palace. Well it's not as lost, it's found. But a great sunken city. Twenty thousand relics, eh? Check these out. They bring them up. The Sphinx from what was once at Cleopatra's Palace. Let's have a little look at this. Hmm. Cool. Oh, I don't want to get copyrighted for that. Fuck me. I'm having been right shit off. I can, excuse my language, it's terrible. Um, I'm going to write shit off YouTube. I'm not really fussed on them at all at the moment. <coughs> they're, like, they're, as they're as nuts as the rest of them. Okay, so I'll link that to you. Just a nice little link to find out about uh, sunken cities, etc. Right, I'm coming back from here. I'm going to look at some other cool stuff. I'm going to talk about breakaway civilization, which we're going to look at pictures of and pictures of the day for some ideas as well. So, 8 o'clock, it's going to be a late post tonight on Saturday. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't and share. Yeah, that's it. Share this out as well. Now, breakaway civilization. We have been offered quite a lot, guys. In the way of land, people talking about land in Australia to kick off civilizations. Few people in America are setting up on their own. But somebody um, who lives in Hawaii has some land in Colorado, um, rent-free. 
and it's going to need some work so it'd be great if someone could like get there take a look at it maybe tidy it up and get this thing started while we can okay plan and get things moving because we can't really sit down and wait around for somebody else to do it because nobody else will so uh, who do i know in colorado oh, oh. ace mcleod what are you doing <laughs> zachary anybody contact somebody let's find out what we can do to get things started okay so rent free land start kickstart a civilization i've also been contacted by mr hunter as don't know if it's rent free i haven't verified that yet but a load of land in northern oklahoma it's rough but it needs a lot of work but it's a lot of land quite enough for a civilization i've also had another couple say they had a load of land and it's quite enough for a large community there as well so that's for maybe half a dozen offers of serious offers of land okay in australia elsewhere i've been looking at land in britain because this is going to be everywhere in all countries okay so everyone can support one another okay and it'd be safer that way okay so it's moving okay resources and uh, people are suggesting left right and center so i've enlisted help if i can i put messages out and please if, if you can um like what i'm looking for maybe is somebody like with an alternative email so they can soak up some of this as well um and you know get back to me and we'll just appoint you know get these things shifting i'll do what i can see what i mean that's where we are so isn't that exciting Okay, so I'm really, I, this all started with an email from a guy called T Taylor, uh, Tyler, excuse me, and he was setting up with his wife, and, and I was like, yeah, I was doing it a year ago, yeah, I know, it's like kicking his back off, because now is the time, now, above all times, is the time, because it's biblical, isn't it, what's happening, so, okay, isn't that exciting, so make sure to keep commenting, keep hundreds and hundreds of you have um, basically messaged, okay, but like, can't you know write all your names down and stuff i just you're gonna have to keep watching so we can get this kicking off and then we'll just work it all out okay guys i'll do it that way and i'll list help in the meantime okay it's only two days old and all of that has just happened so we're off to a flying start is all i can say okay let's get our dodge and fuck these off now and it will be safe. There are people's fears, but that is the danger. It is, we're getting away from fear and all of that. It's going to be a place of safety, and it will be as well. So what we got is a lovely little book of the old days of the Orient and stuff. But they show incredible, I suppose, Oriental, but to my mind, they're Phoenician ships. And they're from antiquity, 1500s and stuff. But look at this. I thought it was flying at first. They got some crazy depictions of star forts and stuff in here. And these crazy Phoenician ports. Yeah. Imagine that in the modern day. It's just absolutely astounding the stuff in this book. It's all in old German. And I'm guessing it's the Orient and they got city names. You've got Cambodia there, look I can see. Which is what it's like now. Not oh, India, go well. Did they have a load of hippies there stoned back then days? I expect so. So what else we got in here? So it seems in this period there are star forts absolutely everywhere in the world. Nowhere is without them. China, India, Americas. Um, so it shows that there was one peoples, they're all like different designs, but they're all star forts. So Syria, one world government even back then. Who were the Phoenicians? Who they called the Romans? Check that off for Astrophan. 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 Oh, it's massive. That's a lead picture. Van der Haar um, picture. Oh, they knew about waters coming in. So they've been destroyed by, uh, I'm guessing, artillery. What have you? The entire city. But these are safe up here. The flood waters have to be really high. Is that viz again, guys? That word viz. Okay, what we got here? Burbent? Who even knows? But they're just building it up. There's 600 pages of star forts and cities of the old world here. And they build everything high up. See, look here. Yeah. Top of everything, because they know yeah, it's the safest place. That's why they call them your highness, because the highness gets the high ground. 
I don't know why they call them like you know your magnificent. It's all magnificent about them, is there? They'd be characterless, boring, droll. What's going on there? Your Excellency. <laughs> Thank you. Just, just bullshit words. <sighs> what sucking up they do? See what I mean, guys? Star footage everywhere. Everything mud flooded outside. Massive amounts of antiqua tech. But 500 pages. Take me to the 10th of never. And I need to move this on. I will link this up to you. Check that one. Juicy star footage. Wow. Everywhere in the world. Perfect. This is um, engineering. And I only pilled it up because it had these big long ladders. But it's like, what? They were doing this in the Middle Ages. Okay, so there's another you know, late Middle Ages book. And they're doing this. So ladders, and they got somebody up that high. Where they're touching up the antiquity. Okay, that's been wrecked in an event. Okay. And these arches, these giant arches, he's just washing it off or painting it. Because he's not fucking building it, is he? They're cleaning it all up. And there's some mosaic, I guess, floors. Excuse me, I can't turn them around when they're viewing them like this. Okay, so we got cannon, have we? Yeah. Okay. Bell gantry. And then you have these massive things. Look, this is like for a giant, isn't it? These tiny little people. Not actually building them. And you've got these giant, insanely big scaffold gantries. Like that in the dome. Oh, is that holds it in place while you build it? Because I actually show it going in. Like that, for example. That's just insane. It sort of clips on. Like, that's just an incredible scaffold. But again, the building's still there. And look at the height of these. Look at the dome there. Just insanely high scaffolding. I've never seen anything like them, ever, in my life, these things in here. They don't actually show that they've been built. They just show you the technology of what they could possibly have used, maybe. Who knows? Look how it clamps on. For what ways? They haven't got that in this day and age. So I guess that holds up that. So Phoenician renovate. Ooh, wobbly columns. Phoenician renovation booklet. Holy shit! And they are monumental uh, engineering projects. Oh, we've seen this one before. They show in. What looks like something to do with. Um, Pylon, exactly like a pylon being carried by them. Okay, and then you got a lady with fasces all on top of a obelisk. What else have we got? And this thing here, it's not a loom as such, it's electrical to me. But yeah, some anomalous materials, uh, machinery, not connected with electromagnetics. I'm sure that's a pylon though. Then pylons could be all world, the ones you see around the countryside. Could be from an old world power grid like this. This this blows you away. Look at this. Right, never mind the size of that. It's electrical fucking circuitry, guys. You even got the curls on the wires, look. Just like on an electrical circuit board. It's all electrical. For even in that day and age. It's just incredible. The size of the people. To put up an obelisk. Like they did with Cleopatra's Needle in London on the Thames. New York had a Cleopatra's Needle. Holy shit. So they put it in there. It's like a circuit board. It's insane stuff. What's she got? I'm going to roll it on there. What kind of obelisk is that? Oh, it's protected. Okay. Well, the Egyptians never laid these obelisks, did they? Look at that. Whatever is that at the end? Jeez, hmm. guys. What have we got here? It's just mental. 
Oh, sorry, I can't get my head around that. It's just crazy stuff. Holy fuck. What the hell is this? What? Well, it's like tens of thousands of people. To do what? Oh, there's circuitry involved in it, we just seen. So it look, definitely looks mechanical and electrical. But what the... Oh, they're all them people to pull up an obelisk. You've got to be having a giraffe. Really? Wow. Just wow. And there it is. All that effort, they used to do all that. Holy shit. Let's have a look. And they're going to be put in a what's that box, and it's below ground level. Hmm. Maybe they're betting someone alive. No oh, damage. So that's a juicy fucking book, but I need to get on. I always say this. Sorry to hurry anybody, but never going to get to see this otherwise. It's gone eight o'clock now. Anyway. So here's a book of German castles, and it was exactly the same point of high ground to get out of the way of floods, but they're just beautiful depictions of your world, as you can see. But I will link you the book, you can look at them for yourself, there's photographs of them as well. These massive Tatarian places are just insane. How about this? All the trenches. Deep trenches. Reduce that time a bit. Oh, excuse me. Oh, maybe that'll be good. That won't be. There you are. Excuse me. Oh, that's beautiful. That's that there and that there. I've seen this before. That's insane they built that. To get from there to there. Keep all the way the flood waters. So, German castles are beautiful affairs. No doubt about it, but it's full of them. Now, Curio, picks of the day, okay. Um, Queen King and Fun will be back next week for another appearance. They can't come every week because they're royal and they just don't do that shit. It's getting dark. Somebody sent me the link. I just thought it was a really incredible thing to say. And it was to do with the police and policing in 2013 and how they think this is going now because of the fucking... Right, the Great Reset is what they're calling it. The Great Reset, policing in 2030. I don't want to read any of it because it's hellish. Okay, forget any fucking human rights you used to have because they're gone forever. You'd be smart gridded, injected, and fucking wired up to their grid forever more unless something happens soon. And this motherfucker, I want to ask the question, right, guys? How's he still alive? Yeah, I'm 52 years of age, and when I was a kid, he was old then. Yeah, he's like 100 years old, Henry, and he still thinks he knows everything, which he probably does, and fucking calls the shots with humanity. So how come Henry Kissinger's 100 and still gives you the beady eye like he's in a fucking way? Anyway, what he said was this in his statement, okay, he said that if you don't surrender completely, and assimilate to the new world order, and we will be forced to set the world afire. Is what he says. In that narrative. So he's saying, behave, do as you're told. If you don't like it, we will just set the world on fire anyway. Is what he said. So, images of the day, guys, and I'm going to be out here, and I'll have this uploaded, I guess it's 10 o'clock tonight, UK time, you'll be seeing this. We'll have a little bit of music, let me bring up some images for you. Oh, first I want to talk about these. Um, this was posted by my friend Stan, who is Space Cowboy UK. He made an excellent video, it was um, mirrored by a plain truth uh, as well. Now. It was the Olympics for 2012, and um, we've talked about it before on Flat Earth British, but what they do is they have a lot of really popping stuff going on, flying umbrellas, they bring out stacks of beds, all kids on the beds, right guys, and they have like the Grim Reaper coming in, yeah, couldn't be more fucking demonic, what is the matter with them, 
yeah. I'm Russell Brown, playing the Sweetie Collector, I'm always with that. So anyways, they have an epidemic. No shit, guys, they do. And, guess who's in the epidemic bed? Back in 20 fucking 12, excuse me, it's Boris Johnson. Because he's the mayor of London at right, that time. Huh? If that's not predictive program, there he is. I'm ill in bed with an epidemic, Boris Johnson. we fucking good for all them years before as well, guys. It's just nuts. So, let's have some images. Got some cool stuff to show you. Please share out, if you would. Ghosts. So, I was going to play some music, but we're going to go through these. Now, this is one of these Phoenician chariots. I'm wondering if it's like an engine in here, or it's just water propelled. Because there's water coming out of everywhere, like sparks, flames, in this Phoenician watery chariot. It's called the Chariot of Love, by the way. Look. Amour. Chariot of Love. Oh. Well, the Phoenicians got to do with love, but apparently they have. This is Tipi Village. Um, I like these guys with suits by here. That's really not ting. Um, but it's absolutely out of this world. I visited there once years and years ago. It was very hippie back then. It's got a little bit more expensive by the look of it. Um, but this is the idea that this is part of some international community setup. They got like places everywhere in the world. So, ghosts look for some ghosts she might not be a ghost she might be just a person but I thought it was a really spooky street I'm just saying uh, ooh, what else we got so medieval plagueage and loads and loads and loads of bring out your dead what you always get with these deities as well right they're always pointing at the sky now people are asking me what about blue kachina man it comes around there we know well, don't know about all that, because they just told us it's going to break up. They said we could have a fantastic light show, and all people are prostrating also, that it could suck up some of the oxygen, or it is sucking up some of the oxygen. This is what's going on, and that's what they're preparing for. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't she probably pretty? And these reset depictions from the Middle Ages. Civil I don't know what that thing is there. And they're hunkered down uh, behind this. Get out of the way of the blast or the heat. The energy weapons. And they turn up three at a time as well. These are more like portals. They're red. So red. And they illuminated this. And that's it in J523. And the orbs. I don't know if they make that noise. Probably. Probably make no noise. And the I'm not sure if this is just sun sun halos that they're showing, reflecting, and the four angels. I think it might be. Which is optical. Reflecting the four angels electromagnetic drawing points. I know I'm not actually sure but um it's, this is Alaska, I think. This Tataria in Alaska. I couldn't even believe it when I saw it. I've been looking into it. Look at these size of these buildings and elephants. Can't remember where that is now. Ah, and an exposition. You got your Phoenicians. Oh, it's forever with their jerks out. They don't do clothes for some reason. The men are a bit weird as well. But look, this is um, Ovid, like C. Ovid. Humans turning into plant form. Maybe they're a species of plant people to go with the species of Centurion and Phoenicians. Look at this armless man, woman, thing. And this, whatever, she's all taking it back into the water. It's got like claws there. And this one as well, kidnapping a naked king and a baby. That's a pan, I think. Taking it back into the water very sinister very very sinister they do a lot of floating around as well what's that over there all watched all the time by someone with a fiery fashies controllers 
not sure about that. Uh, if I was to hazard a guess, these were not really natural formations because they protrude, you see. I can't imagine what feature, except the mud's come through solidified. And this was some sort of gadget, cathodes, in antiquity. Quite fascinating, that one. Ah, there's a beautiful star fort. The ones in Portugal are beautiful, but look at this. This is beaver dam technology. The water comes in this way. It's just going to break it like a battleship. It won't even get it. I don't know about that way, though. Pop off. Oh. It was west facing. And crystal. Um, axe heads from antiquity and post reset period when people were back to hunt and gathering. Cause well, you'll probably know about that if we live. <laughs> Look at that, guys. It's beautiful. No. Stay at home. You'll be safe. Okay. But if you're in, like, paradise or other places, you won't be safe. If you are going to be safe, right, and your house gets a little bit hot, get into a tree. Because apparently trees don't get burnt by um, energy weapons. But houses completely disappear. Look how close that is. Mist the trees completely in every case you see this you see the same for San Francisco and loads of these cities that we focus on so yeah in the event of a forest fire get under a tree I don't know but is he got an acid tap stuck to his wing it's like a probably mantis wing thing Trippy, it's hard to even imagine how trippy that is. What are you? What are you going to do? So, a more Phoenician paintings, Renaissance art. Sucking up to some gauges. You're a nice dog, though. And all the antiquity smash because me reset. Now, I can't say that's definitely an elephant, or it's just a lucky thing, or if it's shopped. Or if the ice just caught it, but it looks like an eye. I like it. I think it'll be an elephant. And here we are, more paradise. Well, not for these people. M trees seem to have scorched, but these are absolutely fine. All the fire spread through is just totally beyond me. But zzz. so you're sitting in the house, they could use energy weapons. You are, use these sick motherfuckers that done the um, Olympics. So they got like a baby with like a quarantine mask on and all around the stadium. Like, this is for like sporting event, by the way. Shit all to do with them. And all these nurses, all in like Victorian clobber. And every bed has got a kid. Now, they shouldn't have even been put up that late. And what are they doing in this fucking stadium for a sporting event anyway? Sick. Epidemic. It's like stealing children. It's fucking. Uh, he's a big giant. He looks a happy chappy. Oh. So they was loads about. So they reckon that some of these statues, like they don't have just bleeding eyes, they move. So this was 3 a.m., um, 3 p.m., 3 a.m. Obviously, I can't verify that, and it could be photoshopped. It's interesting, though. If you're in Australia, so if you find one of these, so I'll mark this, send it over. It's my birthstone. I'm a Libra. Isn't it beautiful? Isn't it trippy? Is that gold? Yeah, it was gold near it, but it had flecks of gold in it too. Oh, I don't believe that happened. Do you believe that happened? That's not even a natural way to hold your hand. Can't even can do that. Oh, it's Jesus. So. I'm not so sure, but interesting nevertheless. It's funny how that house got uh, completely missed. How did it jump that one to that one? That one to that one, no, I missed that. Well, anyway, if it does get hot in your house, get under a tree outside. Apparently they're safe. Yeah. Those trees ain't exploding. They should explode. More unusual arrowheads. 
see the face in it maybe spooky and these giant balls could be comets or what have you I don't think they're natural uh, they show up all over antiquity but some of them are incredibly big one of them would be good for Boyong and this thing is just ah, it's one of the biggest buildings in Christendom in its day in Belgium I've got all my children thumbnails endlessly but look all this flood prevention you could have got your boat just moored up there and walked in so this is all flood prevention they think ahead and two suns ready to shine just for you photographed everywhere there's been a few of them lately two suns showing up okay and the Phoenicians rising up from the water bringing all the Phoenician bullshit and they're completely by now and over with after this reset fucking helocentric insanity so this is a doorway into I think what Wiser once posted was an upside down submarine it's got a crazy entrance but if it's the same building there it is again I thought about with that it might have been some sort of uh, reflection because of this line but it's not it's a separate set very unusual and what we got here 1909 another obeliskage and finding an obelisk in the mud look at that look at that one guys god they had beautiful that's not even an um, exposition it's just copying it there's another one of those glass crystal crystal and it's all engraved all around the edge ancient as ancient as Angkor Wat which is not because it's Phoenician and it's supposed to be Middle Ages which was the impetus for Pol Pot he wanted to be as epic as the Khmer Normans which are Northmen's ghost house Norman's ghost house wow that is so spooky that is so spooky and there you are I have to reset this was the world making the go washing the back in the water supply because it's all gone what about this crystal blade silver just absolutely beautiful really and there you go more of a roar um, Paradise gone, and on Popeye, he lives in the house 666 Kahichi Spinach, and a beautiful mud flooded Russian archage with the Phoenicians because they're everywhere. Another archage in India with Antiquitech building. Could have gone in there, been invigorated or even teleported. So what we got here, London 1897 demolished and it was the Royal oh, the College, your college. And it was knocked down. Look at it. I wonder why that was. And this, I noticed, is identical 100% to the Cardiff Philharmonic Theatre. I mean in every regard. It's just identical. Should have brought one up to show you side by side. But yeah, these buildings are replicated everywhere. Post offices, custom houses, another opal. Oh, it's just absolutely beautiful fucking stone. Absolutely beautiful. Catches the light. Um, these two are in love. They're all over the internet. I don't know if you've come across them. The cat looks pissed off, but he ain't. And the fucking budgie absolutely adores him. He kisses and all sorts. They're always cutching. He's, like, he's not even like, oh, I got a bird on my head. He's like, hey ho, feels okay, don't even worry. So there you are, that's more of California wildfires. And a nice red brick, I don't know what. But nature's taking it back, which it always does. There's more of them balls, look at the size of them. Perfect spears, layers as well. Comets. 
that and the dome falling out and use more flood prevention this has definitely had some more damage here it's all like worn so I'm guessing the flood waters would have come up to here at some stage they got like breaker technology as well these are not bastions there's no need for these features I think they're breakers like dams like pyramids and all of this would have been in water you know up to water up to here you see the damage you see it in all these castles of, of any era of any age so the old world small people or is he just you know these are supposed to be just normal sized leaves and they're saying he's a little man tiny people which I think they might exist uh, tiny kingdoms like the Who's so that looks like Lenin on some giant obelisk somewhere in I guess in Russia did it exist I can't even tell you look at the ceiling on this oh. so trippy it's beautiful beautiful building and more beautiful accents Sorry, uh, no, that is just the first world war. They're about to go over and get killed, so they're ghosts because they're no longer existing. This is the transport of the golden era. Ah, oh. so he keeps all the way down there. And there's the reset world by Pierre van der Haar. What are we gonna do with it all? The survivors have to come up from the bunkers. The high ground, the high ground's always all right. Ghosts. A lot of them were faked, we do know this, and but some of them are quite eerie in the Victorian era, big business in ghosts. I'm not sure because that one literally looks like it's got like a sheet over its head. What about that? Michigan, insane asylum, isn't it mud flooded? What about these lower levels? What kind of building is this? Anyway, it's too haunted, they won't take it down. Oh, there it is again. Just, uh, spooky. Your Highnesses will be high in the sky, out of the way of it all. Look at that for a building. I saw that book, I think I downloaded it to show you. Heidelberg. Excuse me, so I had to click through quick. And there's that building, look. The size of them. There's buildings down there. So the water just run through into there. So this place done is flood prevention. It's all been dug out. It's all metro I did. We see this a lot. Keeping over the water. Keeping over the water. Oh, that's a nice one. Oh, please share this out, guys. I'm going to be coming back shortly and upload this. I'll be back with you in chat tonight. To have some fun. So, wait a minute, something feels wrong. Shut up, you moron. Do as you've been told, it's for your own good. Queen told you that, didn't she? She said, We know it's the right thing to do. I love the way they emphasise on like children being taken away and all that narrative. That was really fucking sinister. I didn't like that at all. So, apparently, yeah, this is shit they do in the past. It's just batter the hell out of you when you're on a, um, on a thing. They got a Thing for torturing people in the past. Now this guy got killed the morning before, um, the morning for this photograph. It was this guy's mate. I don't know, but it's bloody horrible. Uh, there's a big narrative of ectoplasm as well to do with um, John Logie Beard, um, which could be recorded with some of the um, instruments that he designed so they say when people die their energy field exists in chairs for years after but this guy's been picked up fake who knows there he is now his friend joined the group photograph and he died that morning you don't look too gutted but I guess things like people are getting blown up all the time like this mortars the size of them and how many people are in these fucking barges as well Whew. cannons cannonades the size of that no it's not exactly broad sides that we usually see <laughs> boo how about them no they're real apparently the 
family something, Connor. I thought I'd want to say the name, but... Yeah, they're not masks. They really look like that. And there's TP Village. Beautiful, dreamy place. I'm not sure about the fucking tuxedo dudes on all that shit. I mean, I can't go near people like that. Um, I'm not sure if this is out of the window and these are ghosts showing up. Like, somebody's taking a photograph. So where's the camera? It is quite haunting because there's a photo of somebody from the old days. Haunting. So is that it? Okay, spooky, spooky stuff. Now, I'm coming back. I have got absolutely loads to show you peeps. It's just, I had to dump half my vlog because I thought this would be fucking three hours now again. So, good news on the... Um, continued my efforts to pull all this together I'm going to elicit some help now to help me manage things and try and push for breakaway civilization see how that goes okay epic and it gives everybody something to focus on instead of that bullshit that they're coming up with and it's going to go and they're getting worse and they're getting nuttier and they're just fucking with people's heads so I don't go there okay did you enjoy a free vlog me too it was epic <laughs> make sure to come back this week okay keep an eye on the uh Tataria channel as well, Cut the Tataria channel, stuff coming out on there. Um, and when I go live, which I catch up a couple of times a week with you, so we can all chew the fat. Flat of British Things that channel. Okay. Thanks for popping by, peeps. See you soon. MartinLeague7 gmail.com. If you just need me for any information or anything to do with what I've just been talking about. Um, to two revise, we've been looking into. Oh. I got some interviews coming up as well. There's a show that's up and coming, which is going to be really exciting. Uh, keep a look out, you're going to love that. Um, and I got a couple of shows coming up with Zen Garcia, which is really epic. One of them is next week. Uh, talking about all of this. Okay, so that's really, really good because that guy rocks big time. Okay, so that's some of the things we're up to over the next few weeks, or next couple of weeks. So keep watching, peeps. Very, very exciting. And make sure to share. Peace and love, and I'll see you on the scene. Love over for you, peeps. <laughs>